Hi, welcome to Yarn Lane. I'm Wendy Gardner and I'm joined for this hour in a really... And if I fall asleep, I apologise because I'm wearing one of the garments that you can buy today and it is so snuggly and cuddly. I can't wear wool, it's too itchy. This isn't wool, it's made of a cashmere-like um, with mixed with uh, it's a cashmere like polymer mm -hmm. mixed with what is it mixed with carry with acrylic is it with acrylic yeah, yeah. It is which acrylic. makes it very easy to wash and care for but really snugly to wear anyway we're going to um, we're going to go into the details of all that in a while but firstly I want to say I'm joined by Carrie Gardner no relation she hasn't got an eye in her name so. <laughs> So she is going Hello. to show us some of the examples and how to do some of the things. But if you want to buy any of this, you can phone our free phone number, which is 0800 4700 600. Or, of course, you can go to the website yarnlane.com. When you get to the website, if you press on watch live, you can then scroll down and you can see all of the items we've got on the show today. So you can pre-order. If you haven't been with us with Sewing Street this morning, then your postage is 3 95 um, and that covers you for as many times as you check out at your basket. So if there's something you really want, don't feel you've got to hold it in the basket until later because it might sell out. I'm not saying it will, but it might. So you might want to check out and then come back. So it's up to you entirely. Today, we are doing You and Me yarn. And we've got adult sizes and children's sizes of the same pattern. We're going to start with the Sophia cardigan, which is the one I'm wearing. I'm very, I'm slightly modelled here, just here. Um, looks like I've done some really intricate stitching in it. I haven't at all. It's all about the yarn. It's all about the yarn. So in the pattern, you have two easy knit designs, ladies and girls sizes. You have the cardigan and you also have a jumper, a sweater that you can make. So the yarn you're getting for this will make one or other, not both. So it makes one or other. We're going to start with the pink, which is what I've got on and what I've got. Oh, it's just so soft to feel. It really is absolutely beautiful. And with this, it's variegated. So it, that, it's, that's all the clever stuff. This is quite simple. I say very simple knitting. You're going to tell me otherwise, are you? It is <laughs> no, simple, no, isn't no, it? No, no, no. Um, so this is really just a really simple knit design. Obviously, all the instructions are in the instructions, but it just looks amazing because of the yarn, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's a style craft one, which we know is a good make of yarns. Super soft feel. And because it's a blend with this cashmere effect polymide and acrylics, it's 80% acrylic, 20% the cashmere effect. We're not saying cashmere, we're saying cashmere effect. So it's got that softness, but it also means it makes it very washable. So it's going to have longevity. So you can cool tumble dry it as well, very well, but I promise you it's very snug and lovely to wear. So what you will get for this first kit, £32.99, you get the instructions and for the adult you need seven balls, so you will get the seven balls. That is for sizes 8 to 18, which is 30 to 40 inch bust. Pattern does go up to size 20, by the way, which is 40 inch bust. So you've got all of the instructions in here, how to make it all up, the cardigan and the sweater. So that's really good. So it's got both of them in there. Cardigan, doo -doo 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 -doo, sweater, all the way through. So that's really handy, nice and easy to follow. Um, and this is the bundle. This is your first bundle. We also have it for children. So for the children, it's a smaller pack. You only need four balls. And for that, it's 19.99. So it's the same, the same uh, in pattern instructions. It's the same pattern. You get the cardigan and the uh, jumper or the sweater and four balls of this same lovely soft pink yarn. So we're looking at the pink at this point. It's really lovely variegated pink. It's make, it just makes it look, it makes it look like it's incredibly clever, like you've done some fair while but you really haven't and it is really soft and cuddly. Now also in this pattern, which you get the sweater as well, we've got another colourway. So if I move that one to one side slightly, 
So again, you could make the cardigan or you can make the sweater. It's up to you entirely. And this is this colourway here. We haven't got an example of this one, have we? No, so it's lilac. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. It's sort of soft lilac, blue, cream. It's, it's that same mix. So it has that same soft feel to it. Really, really soft, snuggly and comfortable to wear. And again, you get the seven balls for the adult variety. So if you're going to make the cardigan or the sweater, you need the seven balls. If you're going to make the child's version, there's another kit for that because you just need the four balls. So the adult one is $32.99. And of course, you get the pattern again. And in fact, on the back, I don't know if you can see that, but that's, that's the colourway on the back there that we're looking at at the moment. And you can see they've got the both in there. The children's sizes for this is one to nine years, which is 18 to 28 inch chest. So go by the chest size, don't worry too much about the age size because everybody's different. So it's all nice and clear in here and what sizes that you make. You don't need to decide, decide whether you're making the cardigan or the sweater. You can make that decision once you've got the kit at home. You can make either. And of course, once you've got the pattern at home, you can then make the other one using other yarn. So that's what you get. So for the adult, you get the uh, seven balls. For the children, exactly the same yarn, really lovely. I mean, it's fa the fact it's, it's so comfortable to wear and easy to wash mm. is brilliant for the children. And you get four balls and it's 19 99 the other patterns we're doing later in the show are on the website, ready for you to pre-order if you want to look. But we want to head over to Carrie so we can get her working. That's why she's here. <laughs> so she's going to show us some of the detail of these. Oh, and Carrie, you're wearing the green version, which we'll be seeing later as well. You're wearing the green. That's a different pattern, green. isn't it, that one? Yeah, I've got the green here. That's got the beautiful cable up the front there. It's just such a relaxed... You know, look at that beautiful detail on the back. Yes. Isn't it lovely? It, it is. It does look like you've spent, you know, it's spent so hours much and hours on it. Yes. You know, using and different bits of yarn, but you haven't. Yes. It's all in one. It's all this beautiful variegated. And like you said, it's so incredibly soft Isn't it? as yeah. well. But also, you don't feel like, because it's acrylic, it's not really heavy either, is it? No, it's really exactly. nice, really light. Yeah. I could imagine, you know, throwing this on when you go to the beach or something, just like in the photos, which are quite, they're lovely, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, and I think this is it. I mean, now we're allowed to sit outside in the garden. Yeah, perfect. You know, put on something like this something if it's nice. a bit chilly. Yeah. And you'll be nice and snug and warm and you can sit there for that much longer. Absolutely, <laughs> and you've made it as well, which is super. <laughs> so I'm going to show you, <clears throat> the one that you've, you're wearing there, Wendy, I'm going to show you the, um, the moss stitch and the, and the uh, knitting, the stocking stitch. <clears throat> now, both of these are really simple stitches that, you know, you, you guys are knitters, you're going to know these stitches really well. But it's nice to go over, perhaps, just have a look at um, some of the, um, just to move over, sorry, um, just to go over the combination. Look at the combination of that lovely stocking stitch there and this moss stitch. It's exactly the same yarn, you know, I'm not, it's all variegated, doing all the work for you right there. But look at those lovely details between the two stitches. And this is what's happening on the front of your cardigan. We've got the stocking stitch. We've got a moss stitch border. That's how we're casting on moss stitch border. Then we've got stocking stitch. And then we've got the neck band and the button band are going to be in this moss stitch. And those are incorporated in. You're not picking up any stitches on these ones. So I'm going to show you just two. I put them on, you can see I've put them. I was using up all my four millimeter needles at home. So it's four mill does it tell you what needle size it to use? It does tell you yeah. what needle size to use. It's a really standard size that you're going to have at home. So, you and know, we, do, again, we do sell needles on the website as well, And you've also got well, them on the website. So um, really easy to get hold of. Nothing that's going to throw you there. So I've just cast on some stitches here. Again, you can see, look how pretty that is. You know, it's so lovely the way that it's just, and so clever as well. I couldn't even imagine how they work out, how this you know, how all these colours go together and make it look so lovely. But anyway, what I'm going to show you, just the moss stitch, just to, just to recap, if you're a new knitter, um, you're purling and knitting at the same time, but you're purling on a knit stitch and you're knitting on a purl stitch. So can you see here, I've got a purl stitch. So I'm going to take my yarn to the back and I'm going to do a knit stitch. I'm going to bring the yarn through into the, into the front and then I'm going to do a purl stitch. And that's, that's how simple it is, just to give you that little recap. The other so it's thing... it's alternate stitching? Alternate stitches, yeah. 
So what would you say, is this a pattern that newbies to knitting could do? I would say so, I would say so. If you're just, if you know how to knit and you know how to purl, then you can do moss stitch and you can follow this pattern. Um, you know, if it is the first time you're doing it, then make sure you've read your pattern through um, and then have another go. And it might take a couple of reads. But it's nothing, there's nothing in there that's really um, that difficult. But likewise, I think when we come to the, the patterns later on, if you're a knitter um, who's been knitting for a while and you want a little bit more interest, the other ones have got, the one that I'm wearing has got the cable got the on cable it. On so there, that's a little it, yes. bit more interest. But again, you know, if you're an intermediate and you want to have a go at something different, perfect, you know, perfect next step. So the other thing I wanted to show you with this, so this would be, I've cast on, and this is the border, of that cardigan and also the border of the sweater as well it's bordered in this beautiful moss stitch what i wanted to show you was the increase don't panic about your increasing with moss stitch and and the pattern's going to tell you exactly when to do it and how to do it because when you're moss stitching you need it to be alternate so if you're adding a stitch you can you can get yourself out of sequence but because we're adding two stitches on each row that's going to make it up so you're still doing alternate so read your pattern as I said make sure you're increasing where it says to increase now the increase in here is a fairly common increase but it's not knitting into the front and into the back it's making a stitch so what you're going to do I'm just going to show you there can you see this little ladder there this little bit that's in between your needles so there's my stitches my live stitches there this little ladder in the middle here that's what I'm going to use to make a stitch. So I'm going to pick it up with my right hand needle and we're going to pop it onto the left hand needle. And then I'm going to knit into the back of it. Don't knit into the front of it because you will get a big loop. You'll be making a buttonhole where you don't want a buttonhole. And then you carry on with your sequence of moss stitch. And that's all in the instructions? That's all in the instructions. But I just wanted to show you that because sometimes when people say, see an increase, they might be inclined to just go, well, I know how to increase. So I'm just going to knit into the front and the back, which is the most common sort of increase. But don't be tempted to do that because you want it to be in sequence. And this is just giving you that, um, that the way of, of increasing that's going to keep you in that sequence of moss stitch. And it's just actually, it's a little bit neater, I think, sometimes than knitting See, into the front See, sometimes I think, I'm just going to move this dress back a little tiny bit because I'm having to look round. Sorry, lady, but I'm having <laughs> to look round you to see Carrie. So I'm going to move you back. No problem. Um, yeah, sometimes I think it's better to be a beginner, actually, because you would read that rather than think. Yeah, I know. know. What, yeah, I know what I'm doing. So, yeah, but, so it can be better to be a likewise, beginner. But likewise, you know, I, I always think it's good to keep you on your toes a little bit. If you've been a knitter <laughs> for a while, just, you know, go back to the basics and think, OK, I'm going to make something that's really beautiful, but actually it is just using. I'm just, I just love the simplicity of it. It's knitted with just stocking stitch and moss stitch and yet you've made a beautiful garment yes. and and because of the variegated yarn it's so interesting I, as well. that's what i think I, th I love the fact it's like when you're working with beautiful fabrics yeah. keep the design simple yeah, absolutely. because you don't you don't need to over complicate things yeah, and this off. is this is so lovely to wear it i is. think it's i'm going to forget to get it off oh well I I, i'm not going to say anything think, i'm not going to say i think anything. kat will be barring <laughs> that door and not letting me out of the building <laughs> so i'm just going to finish it because the other thing i wanted to show you just whilst we're on moss stitch is I wanted to show you a buttonhole. Now, if you've been looking closely at my knitting and think, oh, she's got a whacking great big hole in that. I have done that on purpose, I promise. I did that on purpose there, um, just because I want to show you the, um, the buttonhole. So again, in the pattern, it's written really nicely, really easy to follow, but just make sure you're reading it through. It's gonna tell you where each of your yarn overs are going to go so that you're making your buttonholes. But I'm just going to remind you about yarning over. Yarn over is what beginners do by accident and they're making it's not wrong it's not wrong it's just a buttonhole in the wrong place that's all it is that's all it is so let me just move this yarn out of the way over here so I'm going to carry on in moss stitch just for a couple of stitches and then I want my buttonhole to be about here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sorry I'm going to keep the yarn forward can you see I need I've got a I've got a moss stitch I've got a pearl there rather so I need to knit on top of it, but I'm going to forget to take my yarn to the back. I'm going to keep my yarn at the front and I'm going to knit it. So as you can see, as I loop it over, I've made, oh, I've made a stitch there. And when I come back to it, I'm going to knit it and that's going to create that buttonhole. And that's as simple as, simple as it is for, for making your buttonholes. So that's what I wanted to show you there. Um, 
it's just so nice to knit with as well. Does so it feel nice running really, through your fingers? Really soft. And really, what needles really are you using? Are they bamboo ones? They are. I think they're just bamboo four millimetre needles that I found lurking around at home. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. So I'm going to just move those ones across now. Let's take those off because I wanted to show you the border of this one. So as you can see here, we've got... So this is running down the front of your, of your cardigan here. We've got this, which is going to be the button band and the... And where your button holes are going to go and then just the stocking stitch along here um, and all I'm doing is a few few stitches of moss stitch before I get into stocking stitch oh I see so you're not stitching it on separately no no isn't that oh, great so you do it all at the same time yes all that is good time. isn't it yeah so that's on there and we just take that over and then I'm on a pearl row so I'm just going to carry on purling there we go carry on purling like that to the end now you're going to knit the your uh, are you going to um, let me just double check that I'm telling you the right thing I believe you're going to be knitting the side that's got your button holes in it first because then what you're going to do is use those to then line up where your buttons are and it's going to show you that really nicely and explain it to you how many rows it is that you need to count up from your cast on edge and then that's where your buttonhole is going to be. And all I would do, it gives you the measurement for, or the positioning for your first button. Let me just get to the end of this row. You can see I'm just, just purling because I'm on a, doing some stocking stitch here. So we're going to count up a couple of rows and that's what the position of our first buttonhole. So once I've knitted, we have to use your imagination here and pretend that I've knitted this whole front panel, this front edge. I'm going to count up a few rows and I'm going to place a marker and then it says it gives you that first one, it gives you the first one so I'm just going to grab just you know you could just use a pin, I've just got these little markers here, I'm just going to count up a couple of rows. In stocking, in, um, stocking stitch it's quite easy if you're looking at um, your, where your rows are quite easy to see where they are. Moss stitch, all you have to do is make sure that you're counting in between as well. So we're going to mark it where our buttonhole is going to be. It then gives you the last buttonhole. So once you've got the whole thing going up here, you'd mark your last buttonhole. So that's this is what, how I would do it. I'd mark my first one. Then it tells you the positioning of your last buttonhole, the top buttonhole. And then what I would do is fold it in half and then divide up the other sections and that's where your buttonholes are going to be. Don't, don't, I wouldn't bother counting each row. Yes. Fold it in half, yep. then do that, do that one and then do some more buttonholes. So does side. that mean, how, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just being a bit lost. No, so no, not at all. You, if you've done your, if you've done your um, binding all the way up, mm -hmm. you haven't put your buttonholes in. You put your buttonholes in. As yeah. you do it. Yeah, you put your buttonholes so how in do as you, you do it. So how do you go from the bottom to the top buttonhole then? Okay, I'm, am I saying buttonholes and I'm meaning buttons? So buttonholes ah, is what right. I just showed you on so that you one. So you do the buttons so button holes is what I'm, Yes, you do the, so your buttonholes are on one side and it's the position of those is exactly where they need to be. And then you line up, you so line you up with your buttons. Right. And it's gonna tell you the position of the first one and the last one and then you, you're able to um, work out um, where to put your buttons and you can measure it up against the okay, other one so as well. Okay, so you can just measure it up really, yeah, can't you? can measure you it up. You don't need to do any counting. Loose there. Oh, it's button. a button loose on this one. Wasn't my sewing, I promise. I'm not known for my sewing skills. <laughs> <laughs> so we just want to know, um, just your opinion, would you think the cardigan or the jumper is the mm. easier of the two? I know, as you say, a lot of people watching this will be good knitters and that's not yeah. going to be a problem for yeah, them. Yeah, good knitter. I, I think either, if you, if you feel really confident, I think either the cardigan or the sweater, I think if you, hmm, I would err on the side of, just because you haven't got buttonholes and you haven't got button positioning, I would say perhaps the slightly easier one is the sweater. Right. Um, and I'm going to show you the sweater now. Just give you a, as I don't think we've got, we haven't got this colourway knitted up in anything, so I just want to show you. I've knitted just a little sample. This funnily of enough, those this is the most popular colourway. It's beautiful. I don't. It is I beautiful, don't, I'm isn't not it? surprised. I'm really not surprised. It's lovely. These. It's got lilacs. It's got cream. It's even got mint in there as well, mm. and a bit of blue. 
It's really seasidey, isn't it? It is, it's beautiful. Really lovely. I like it a lot. So this is a little sample. Obviously they're all going to look slightly different because um, you know this I haven't I've I've just taken um, a few stitches just to show you again the contrast, the really pretty contrast between the stocking stitch and the moss stitch. So the sweater has got a moss stitch panel that runs all the way up the front and then stocking stitch either side. So I just wanted to show you that lovely contrast there. But your rows of colours are going to be slightly thinner than they are on here because you're going to have more stitches. So, so that's just that yes, contrast Yes, I see what there. you mean. So the sort of the stripe effect would be narrower. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, We've got a, quite a few blocks of, of lilac there. So they're going to be a bit more spaced out and interspersed with the mint and the cream as well and the blue. So again on this, if I flip it over, you can see I'm just about to start a pearl row. I've just got stocking stitch on the side and again the pattern's written really nicely so you just follow it out. But I would say that perhaps this is a little bit more simply because as long as you can knit and you can, um, you can purl, you can do this. You've got no buttonholes to do, you know, no positioning or anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to purl and then when I get here I'm going to stocking stitch, uh, I'm going to moss stitch rather. It tells you in the pattern each row and each row you have a border of moss stitch down here and then you'll start your stocking stitch with your moss stitch panel in the middle. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and just show you. It's quite a good pattern, I would say, if you are a beginner because it really helps you focus on learning what is a knit stitch and what is a purl stitch. And I know that might sound really obvious if you've been knitting for a long time, but that's one of the keys to getting better at your knitting because if you can tell where you've made a mistake, where you've put a knit stitch and it should have been a purl stitch, that's half the battle of you know, learning mm -hmm. how to knit and, and making sure that you're doing the right thing. So I've purled along here, and then you can see I'm gonna, this first one here, I've got a little bump, that's my purl stitch. So I'm gonna take my yarn to the back and I'm going to knit. And I'm going to purl the next one because it's moss stitch and that is what you do. So you're taking your yarn to the front and to the back each time, bringing it front to purl, taking it to the back to knit. So that panel runs all the way up the front of the of the sweater and then your your sleeves are knitted with a moss stitch border and then they are stocking stitch. Um, so yeah, really simple and very really simple, lovely. isn't it? Yeah. I love and I love I love the moss stitch actually. Yeah. I, I yeah, moss stitch I have to say, one of my favourite stitches for being really simple but just feeling really lovely and, and having such a nice um, nice detail to it. And I think it really brings out the uh, the yarn in this in this particular, yes, particular colour variation. Yeah, really lovely. And what I like too with, with these kits, so £32.99, you get enough balls, so you get seven balls um, for either the jumper, the sweater, or yeah. the cardigan. So you choose which one you want to make, but you've got enough to make one or other yeah. of them. You can make your decision, can't you? are deciding whether, really, you're deciding what colour, and then once you get it, having a look at the pattern perhaps, and then deciding, am I gonna knit a sweater or am I gonna knit yes, the cardigan? Exactly. And which, yeah, which, which one you're gonna go with. I don't, I'm not sure which one I would choose to be honest. My I daughter, know, it's hard. My daughter would definitely go for this one, I think. What, that this, colour The way? lilacs, yeah. I think she would, because she loves unicorns. I think I say this on every show I'm on. <laughs> she loves a unicorn, and these, she said to me, the mum, that's a unicorn colour. Unicorn colour. Unicorn colours, yeah, yes. unicorn colours. Yeah. Um, I, I like this one, I have to say, but also we've got another colourway coming up, which I like too. Mm, mm. Um, I, I, this is, I, I think pink is a really pretty colour, goes with lots of things. Yeah, it does. Lot of denim, you know, and, yes. and anything really. It's yeah. one of those sort of things. It's one of those colours that goes with nearly every woman as well, yeah. actually. Yeah, I agree. Nice and warm, isn't yes, it? And it you've got a little bit of like a toffee colour in there as well, I think. Yes, it so is. It's, it's quite, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's got sort of fuchsia pink. Um, candy floss pink, pale pink, a little bit of sort of a creamy colour and a little bit of fawny colour and a little bit of like light chocolate colour. Mm. Yeah, really lovely. I can't actually take it off but I can put it there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all I these different colours that are coming through. It is quite warm, isn't it? It's getting quite warm. Also, I don't want to use that button and also I want to show you this one when we, when we come to knit. So um, it's really lovely. This one, I want to show you this one in the detail. Do we want to show the other colourways? Okay. So let us know when you've finished this yeah. sample and then the, well, we will go on to we the can, other. We can stop whenever you like and, and go on to the, these ones are, because of, because of the nature of the moss stitch and the stocking stitch, they are really simple. So it is just that remembering whether you're on a knit stitch or a purl stitch, 
and making sure and you can check back on your work as well you know you can just check back and it will become quite obvious to you as you're going through whether you've got a stitch wrong and I think also because of the variegation it's actually look you can see that I've started a nice kind of mint colour against the lilac so it's actually quite easy to see it's quite forgiving so you can see if you've gone a bit wrong and you can just take that back and and go again but um, yeah I'm just I just love the the simplicity of it like you're saying why if you've got really something really lovely to work with why bother making it too Make complex it yes. because it's it's really pretty and I've really enjoyed um, having a look through the patterns they are quite simple to to understand and and I quite like that um, yeah, you can make that choice when you've got it and you, and you can have a look yes. and see. And decide, you know, do you want a cardigan that you can slip over um, because we're going, we're going into spring and summer, hopefully, yeah. although apparently next week's going to be cold. No, who knows? Um, who knows, knows what we're getting? <laughs> or do you want to have like, I mean, a jumper, just because it's a jumper doesn't mean it's winter only. No. Because in these colours, and the, this is still the most popular colour, the one you're working with at the moment, which is the, the lilac -y and blue. It's called Lilac, lilac Grace. It's called Grace, yeah. Grace. Yeah. So that, that's the one that's most popular. But, but that is summery colours. So even if it is a jumper, it will mm. still work. Yeah. And, um, and we do, of course, have the pink. Don't forget the one that I'm wearing. Sophia, that one. This called. is Sophia. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so soft and squishy. Seven balls in the adult size, which is 32 99 including the pattern, or four balls in the child size. And it's up to you whether you make either the sweater or the cardigan, the instructions will tell you both. It's really good value actually for a sweater, isn't it? It is. That's really good value for something that's so soft and feels that soft and, you know, cashmere like. It, it's a great value it for, is. It for is. seven it balls of yarn. Say, I can't actually wear wool mm. um, because it's just too itchy. Yeah. I, you know, in the same with wool fabrics, it's the same with wool. Um, but this is just so soft yeah. and cuddly yeah, and, the, and because it's what it is it'll be much easier to wash and launder yeah. won't it? Absolutely perfect. I like, yeah, I think if you're going to make something for a child um, or re indeed yourself, you know, it, it's so nice to know that you don't have to be so precious about it yes. and you can pop it in the washing machine and, and you can, like you say, pop it on a cool um, tumble dryer as well because when we're going on holiday and things that's, that's just perfect, isn't it? It is. You don't exactly need something you need. that needs to be blocked out each time, etc. Yeah, exactly. So Ooh, we've got to look at some of these other colours. Let's go for it. Let's have a look. Okay. Look at this one. So it's, is it the, so we're talking the same pattern still. Oh, we've got a different pattern. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, it's in front of me. Hold on a sec. Let me grab. This is, so this is the one that Carrie was wearing just now. Uh, this is green. Which was, What's this called? Olivia. Olivia. This is Olivia. And again, you can make a cardigan for, for yourself and your little girl, or you can make a sweater. And you can see the sweater on the back there. Uh, now, this is very slightly more complicated, and it's got the cable on the front, mm -hmm. hasn't it? Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's but not it's, not, complex, it's not difficult. It's not. A but complex. it's just slightly more more um, thing. And again, the size range. It says um, it goes up to eighteen to twenty, which is thirty eight to forty inch. Uh, I'm not sure what it starts at. Does it say what it starts at? This is what the, the top size is, but it doesn't know what the bottom yeah. size is. Um, doo -doo -doo, ladies' sizes. Oh, eight to ten. Mm. That's a dress size. So. Bus measurements, we're looking at 30 to 32 inches, up to 38 to 40 inches. So this time you get, if you're uh, looking for the chart, four balls of yarn for the children. So for the children, you still get the four, like you did before, you get the four balls. But for adults, you just get six. You only need six balls for either of the, the sweater or the cardigan. And it's again, it's the same, it's the same beautiful yarn. It's 80% acrylic. And it's 20% of this cashmere effect polyamide, which means that you can wash it at 30 degrees, you can tumble dye it on a low heat, you can iron it on a low heat too. It does say you can even dry clean it, but I don't know why you would. So these are lovely. This is greens and olives and the blues. And you saw it on Carrie earlier. It just looks much more complicated than it is, purely because of this beautiful variegated yarn. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, bless you. Bless you. So let me just. Um, 
it's always the way when it gets to about this time of the day. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. So it's the yarn fibres and everything, isn't it? Um, so yes, this is the green. We also have this other, this one here. Look at this one. I'm not sure this isn't my favourite. This is a lovely one as well. This is called Ava. So these are sort of more heathery, aren't they? They're sort of heather mm, colours. Mm. So you've got sort of pinks, blues, purples, sort of really, really beautiful colours there. And in fact, again, if you look at the back of the pattern, that's the colours on there, on the sweater that's on there is the one we've used here. So you get six balls as an adult, not as an adult, but to make it for an adult. Um, if you're making it for a child, it's a four ball pack. So the six ball pack is 28 99 and it's, it is still at beautiful quality. And the uh, the four ball pack for children is nineteen ninety nine. So you can choose which of the garments you make once you've got it all at home and you're looking at it and you're feeling which do I want to make. Right now you just need to choose which colourway you're going for and which pattern you're going for. So you've got the first two we were looking at, which is the one I'm wearing now, uh, the pink one. Um, so that was the first pattern. That's the, that's the nice simple one. Um, which is just the cardigan and the sweater and now we're going to look at this next pattern that has got the cabling on the front which is just a little little, little step up in uh, technical techniques and things but not, still not too complicated clear instructions all the way through so it's easy to follow um, and we both said you know read the instructions mm. through yeah. before you actually get going so it's a good time to sit with a cup of coffee read your instructions so you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing yeah, get excited about what it is that you're going to knit. Um, I've got a couple of things, little tips with this one. So as we were saying, yes, perhaps that step up because it's cable and people get a little bit scared, don't they? Oh, it's a cable, that's gonna be really tricky. It's not really tricky. If you can knit and you can purl, just like all the others, if you can knit and you can purl, then you can do cabling. You're just reading the instructions. And it's got all the abbreviations in the front as well, telling you exactly what it is that you need to do, where your cable is going, whether you're holding your cable needle to the back or to the front, and all of them are to the back. So you're not getting confused either by having to hold some to the front and some to the back. I want to show you on this, there's the, the front of this of the cardigan so the cable goes all the way up the front of the of the um, cardigan just look at that those colors i mean they're just put together so nicely aren't they, they? Are they're beautiful such beautiful combinations colors. yeah really lovely now this one the button band and the and the buttonholes are knitted separately so i'm going to show you um i just wanted to show you how that looks um on, a, on another um, demo in a moment but I'm going to I'm going to have a look at the cable because I think that could be the thing that is either people thinking I love doing cabling or oh I'm a little bit scared about cabling don't worry at all so you can see here we've got some some lovely ribbing and that's what sets up your cable now your ca this is a really interesting cable because you've got a cable going to the back and you're all set up but then it switches. So when I first did this, I had, did I did sit there with my cup of tea because I was thinking, oh, is that right? Is that can that be right? I'm switching where you're setting up here, and I've got a lot of pearl going on. Well, that's where my next cable's going to be here. And same again, you know, I've got I've got a cable here, but it's got pearl above it. So make sure you are reading the pattern well. It's not going to catch you out but it's gonna give you that bit of interest. Your, your cable needle, as I said, is always going to the back, but you are resetting. So you've got, it's almost like you've got a little band there and then you reset and then you've got another one because your cable is going. So it's not just yeah, one long cable. not just one long cable, which, I, which again shows off the pattern of the yarn so beautifully, of the colors of the yarn really, really nicely. Now the other tip that I have, if you're going to start knitting, if you're gonna knit the sweater, uh, sorry, if you're going to knit the cardigan, I would say start on the front panels because when it gives you your tension square, now I know some knitters are like, oh, I'll never do a tension square. I always do a tension square. I'm that kind of knitter. Always do a tension square. However, what I do is I always knit what I need to knit. So this tells you in the pattern that you need to knit your tension square with cable. That's how you're going to measure how many stitches and how many rows are in a 10 centimetre area but knit the bit that is, has got the least amount of cast-on stitches. 
So don't just do a tension square, start knitting your garment, is what I would recommend. Start knitting your garment, but the smallest part available, so on this bit, it would be the front panel. On the sweater is gonna be the sleeve. Start knitting that, and when you get to a point where you can measure your 10 centimeters, so I've got my, so I would perhaps knit up to here, knit up to about here, and then I would do my tension square. And I'd make sure that I've got the right amount of stitches, of rows and stitches in that 10 centimetres. And then if I have, you can just carry on. You don't have to have knitted a separate tension square. But if you haven't? If you haven't, you haven't knitted that much. Right. But, you know, it, I, th I always think, it's in my mind, I think lots of knitters think, oh, knitting a tension square is just a waste of my time. It's not because you don't want to end up with something with really dangly arms or, or something small. that is too small yeah. and doesn't fit you. But... If you start with thinking, I am knitting, I'm starting to knit my project, but I'm knitting the smallest tension. bit mm. first. So actually, if I have to rip it back because I need to go up a needle size or down a needle size, you haven't really gone that far into it. Most knitters, if, you, if, you, if you're a seasoned knitter and you've, you've knitted a while, you're going to know whether perhaps you need to go half a needle size down or half a needle size up. But if you're new to knitting, this is a really good way. Knit the smallest bit first. Yeah. Then if you rip it back, it's not really that much to have to rip back. See, now, it's funny because when I do dressmaking, you know, you're supposed to make a twelve every time. Mm -hmm. And I don't do that, but I tissue fit. Uh -huh. And like you're saying, you do your square every time. I tissue fit every time, even though I've done God knows how many patterns. Um, but the other thing I do, if I'm making a lined garment, I do the lining first. Yeah. And that way, you there can you do go. your test fitting exactly. on the lining. Exactly. It's not too big a job if you have to change it. Exactly. I think that's, you know, with, with this one, if you're going to knit the sweater, then the cable I've knitted in this beautiful Ava here. I, I do love this one as well. The colours are so nice, aren't they? Um, I've started knitting the sleeve because that's where the cable, the, the front and the back are in stocking stitch and your, um, your sleeves are in cable. So I've started knitting. So I'll be able to tell in a few more rows, I'll be able to tell whether I've got, you know, I need to do another couple of centimetres. I'll be able to tell whether I've got the right amount of rows and right amount of stitches. But again, I won't have knitted that much. Yes. Um, that so you're, you're testing that on the, the cable bit, not the ribbing. Yes, and it tells you in the pattern, really helpfully, it will tell you what it is over stocking stitch. So you can, if you want to, um, I guess it, you could in the card, you could start knitting the sleeve and then you could test your tension with the um, stocking stitch. Um, with the, um, it also tells you to have a look over pat over the pattern as well. Some people, some knitters, um, they they seem, seem to have a slightly tighter tension when they're cabling. Perhaps it's the the being I don't know being worried about Maybe having being a bit more tense. Yeah, or something. Like, oh, I'm cabling. Yeah. But um, but so it gives you the tension square in the pattern um, for both the cable and for the stocking stitch. So I'm going to start here. I've as you can see I've knitted a few. I've got this lovely. Um, this lovely rib here, which is knitting to, purling to, and then we go into the cable. I'm going to show you a cable row with this beautiful Ava yarn here. So let me just go back to my pattern. Okay, so I'm going to, it also tells you here about increasing because as we know, we need to increase our sleeves. As you're increasing, those increases are going to run along the inside of the sleeve and underneath, so they're not going to be part of the cable. So don't panic that you're going to have to add extra cable. It is just these cables that it tells you about in the stitches in the pattern and then your increased stitches are running up the side in stocking stitch. So I'm going to increase and it tells us in the pattern increase in the first stitch purling into the front and back. So again it's different to the last time so make sure you are reading your pattern and, and not just going off on a tangent. So I'm going to just give myself a little bit more yarn there. I'm going to start purling into the front, taking my needle to the back and purling into the back. It is always a bit tricky doing this in purl than it is in knit, but you will get there, don't worry. So then I'm going to purl two, one and two there. And a couple more because I have already done some increases, so I need to get to two. I need to get to my knit, my knit rows here. Um, and then I'm going to take my cable needle and all you're doing is putting, slipping two stitches onto the cable needle. Now you hold it to the back, then you knit two stitches, oh, making sure that your yarn is in the back, otherwise we're making a loop, we don't want to do that. One and two, 
and then we knit the ones off the cable needle. And that is your cable. And then it tells us that we need to purl six. So I'm going to bring the yarn to the front and purl six like this. I really love this cable. I've not actually, there's so many different variations of cable that you'll find you'll be knitting, you can knit so many garments and never come across the same cable. Really? Yeah, yeah. So there we go. I've come back to the four knit stitches there. So I'm going to take slip two of those off. There we go. Those are going to go to the back. I'm just going to hold them to the back, make sure that my yarn is in the back as well. And then I'm going to knit two, one and two. And then knit the two off my cable needle. And that is how you'll go along, purling the stitches in between and knitting and cabling your knit stitches. And, and that is giving you that beautiful, that beautiful design. I'm, really, I'm a big fan of this of this cable, you know, I think it's really effective. But it is effective, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but you've not done anything terribly complicated. Um, so I, I would say, you know, an intermediate knitter who wants to have a go of something a bit, a bit more challenging, this could absolutely do it for you, I think. Yes. Um, but likewise, if, you were, if you're a seasoned knitter, you'd have this knitted up in no time. Absolutely no oh, time. It always, it always amazes me. My, um, uh, my mother-in-law would sit and she could, you know, knit and converse and, yeah. you know, just, she didn't have to look. Yeah. You know, she, she could look at the pattern, right, that's what I've got to do. And off she would go. I have a friend who can just memorise her patterns. I could never do that, which is why I've got the pattern here, because yes. even though I've knitted quite a lot of this, I couldn't memorise it. Um, but she'll knit socks just from memory. I think that's, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. So this is the, this is the Ava colourway. Um, Again, it's got some really beautiful blues in here. You kind of, you know, it's, it's hard to choose, I think, because, you know, if you liked blues and things, actually, you could choose almost, apart from the pink, you could choose almost any of these colour and be yes, satisfied, couldn't you? you? Could, yes. But like, if you like pink, well, you could choose Ava or Sophia um, and, again, be satisfied. I think... Um, I, think I know, I'm not sure which of the two sort of pinky ones I prefer. No, I don't the know. The most popular one is still the, the Grace from the first one. That's this one. Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely. It's funny, it is. isn't it? Yeah. Maybe people are feeling those spring vibes. I don't it know. It is. I like the pinks and I like these. It's like heather colours. This is Ada, yeah. isn't it, this one? Yeah, this one that yes. I'm knitting with now is Ava. Ava. Um, I think this is going beautifully with denim. I do love the fact that you could just throw these on. Even this, because they're so soft, they're not really, really fitted, are they? And you could just throw them on, you know, when you're on the beach or like you said, you yes. know, go and pop, pop a little cardio on in the evenings when it's we're hopefully going to be sitting outside a bit more. <laughs> And, um, and it's going to keep the chill off. It'd be yes, lovely. Yes, definitely. Extend your sitting in the garden. Yeah. So there we go. I've got the to way the end. I, had, I did this the other day. Before I came up here, I went um, to see one of my longest, long, longest running friends. I want to say oldest. It sounds <laughs> awful, doesn't it? And, um, and another friend. And we just met in the garden and sat. And it wasn't sunny, but it was warm enough. Yeah. And we just sat and chatted That's for about we three want, hours. It? it was so yeah. lovely. So warm lovely. enough and, and a little cardi to keep you, yes, keep exactly. the chill off. Keep the chill off. Absolutely perfect. So I've done that cable row there. And so I've got to the back, got to the next, the wrong side of the work now. And I am just once you've done once you've set it when you've set your patterns so row one and row let me just double check after the second uh, I can't remember which row it is now but once you've set your stocking stitch rows it's really easy to to then see okay look I've got some knit stitches there I need to do some knitting on those ones we're not more stitching on this one obviously we are doing stocking stitch so that it shows off our cable really nicely um, so there we go. I'm just gonna. The when you're when you've done a cable row and you're on the wrong side, do just make sure that all of your cable stitches, all the stitches that have been involved with the cable. Look, you can see. Can you see there? I've got a little loopy bit there. That's literally just from doing the cable and stretching the yarn over. So just as you come to that stitch, just make sure that it's lying really nicely and you've given it a little tighten to make sure that your cables aren't loopy. And so I've got to that one now. Look, you can see it's just where it's been pulled across. So I am going to bring it forward and purl it. Just make sure that I give it a, nice, a little tighten up when I get to that next one. And that will make sure that they're really nice and they lay, lay nicely on, when you're on your garment. 
So that's Ava. Should we have a look at the um, the Olivia um, demo that I've done with the green? Yes, please. That would yeah. be good. And then we'll okay. have seen all four of the yeah. colours. Yeah. Okay. We? So let's put that one to one side. This is the second most popular. This one. Olivia. Yes. It it's going to be pretty. It this is the pretty. one. So the, um, are you the cardigan? You said on this one the bands are they're separate, separate. Isn't them separate yeah they're separate so like i was saying earlier with the um with working out where your buttonhole buttons i should get my teeth in shouldn't i um so on the other one on the other patterns that we were looking at it's just measuring up against you put your buttonholes in as you knit because you're knitting the neck the um the band along with it um it's all incorporated so then you can just m make sure you've got your um, buttons in the right place. We've got it. I think we've got the children's one here. So you can just make sure that you've got the button holes lined up. This is the children's ones, which might look a bit stretched on there. But um, for this one, we are knitting these separately. And I, I just love, can you see that? I just love the way you've got your cable. So you've got your stripes running one way, but because you've knitted this band separately, stripes are going yeah, in another way it's isn't that lovely isn't it? that's very effective. really really nice i love that i think it's oh it's just so lovely i can't go over how soft and lovely these are <laughs> it does it really it really feels cozy yeah so i'm just going to show you on this one just um here we go how we're going to do those um do those ribs for the for, it's going to tell you how many to pick up and when you're picking up like I was saying with it working out where your buttonholes are, um, you're going to put the buttonholes in a particular position because it, that's where the pattern's going to tell you. And when it comes to doing, when it comes to doing um, your buttons, you'll be able to line them up um, really nicely and you can choose what buttons you want to put on there. And it's, um, it's really simple, but I just love the way that it's got, you know, you've got your stripes going in an opposite direction and just showing off those colors. So I'm just showing you here just that rib and the rib again is going to make sure it holds its shape too you're not going to have that and that's what the moss stitch does on the band mm. of the one you're wearing make sure that it holds its shape really nicely um, so here we've got the rib so I'm just purling two and knitting two that's all we're doing on that one and then the buttonhole would be made in the same way we would yarn over so what I might do when I get to the end here I think what I'm going to do is show you just that yarn over so that you can see where it's going to go because we're because we're working in the rib we want to make sure that we're sticking with the same uh, we've got the same pattern set so what essentially what we need to do is we need to lose a stitch in order that we can then make a stitch which is going to be our buttonhole okay so we're going to we're going to knit two together so here. that's how you're losing a stitch yeah that's how we're losing it and then we're going to yarn over immediately afterwards. So we've we've reduced by a stitch and we've increased by a stitch. Yeah, I'll do that again in just a moment. We'll come back to it. Here we go. So we're going to knit two together. Obviously, you wouldn't have buttonholes this closely together. <laughs> we're going to knit two together and they are purl stitches. Don't panic. It tells you in the pattern. We're going to knit two together like that. And then we're going to yarn over and knit the next two. And then when we come back on them, you'll see how they look slightly odd. You've got like a slanted stitch there. Can you see they, all the others are sitting quite flat and then you've got a slanted one. That's the one where we yarned over. So now I'm going to go back. So I'm going to purl two, like so. And then I've come to this one. Look, you can see how loopy it is. But if we knit it, it's going to make a lovely buttonhole for us. There we go. There we go, there's our buttonhole made. So if I have go along to the next ones, we made one just up here a little bit further, didn't we? Yeah, two very close buttons. There we go, very close buttons. Probably won't need them on this one. There we go, so we take the yarn to the back because we're going to knit it. We knit that one there, knit the next one, and there we go, there's our next hole. So that is as simple as that, can you see the hole there? Oh yes. That's it, That's and as I said to you, that is, is lots of knitters, lots of beginner knitters will think, oh, I can't do that. Well, you probably do that by accident. <laughs> yeah, by making a stitch by accident. And then if you go and knit it, you've made a buttonhole. That's what I say to often if I'm teaching beginners. Oh, I've got a big hole here. No, no, you've, you've just hole. accidentally learned how to make a buttonhole. That's a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so that's, that's then um, we're picking up stitches 
here, you pick up your stitches and you're able to then um, knit along and knit your buttonholes. Um, if you're trying to work out how many stitches to, it tells you how many stitches it is that you need to pick up. The great way of doing that is, um, is to divide it up, I would say. Just quickly, get a little, another one more last little tip. In order to, it tells you how many stitches you need to pick up, you will have knitted the whole of your front section. Fold your front section in half, place a marker. And then you know that half of that amount that you have to pick up is there. Or you could even fold it in half again. Make it really simple for yourself yes. so you know that a quarter of your stitches then are going to be on here. So if you're folding it into quarters, divide the total number of stitches that you need to pick up by four. By four. And mm. then that's how many, and that's a lot of it, that's a lot easier to work out, for example, I need 10, 20 stitches there than it is to think I need 70 stitches along here to get yes. them even. I mean, you could even do it into six if you want to. Just make it as simple as yourself, mm. for yourself as you can. Divide it up and place either a marker or just a pin or something. Place your markers there and then that's how many stitches you know you need to pick up on that section. Um, and then you'll go and do your rib and you'll make your buttonholes as well. And that'll make it a lot easier yeah. to do, won't it? Make it more even. Yeah, it makes it even, exactly. So, yeah, lots of people think, oh, gosh, I've got to pick up 70-odd stitches there. How, uh, how on earth? And you might end up with, I don't know, 50 down here, and then you've got another, you know, just <laughs> a couple. A of divide, it, divide it up. Take the time to divide it up first, placing your pins or something, and, and, in, and make it really manageable and how many stitches you need to pick up. Thank yeah. you ever so not much. At all, for that. Not at all. That's it's been been fascinating. Lovely. Very but calming. <laughs> the, oh, the green's gone into the lead. Oh, has it? Oh. <laughs> Olivia, yeah. And and it's perfect, isn't it? Olivia with all these lovely greens yes, and it's like olive yeah, colours. Great, great names. So if you want yeah. this one, the adult version, um, it's twenty eight ninety nine. You get six balls and you get the pattern, of course. Um, and the children's one is four balls and it's 19.99. That's the Olivia. And don't forget you get the pattern as well and you get enough to make one of the two, the sweater or the mm -hmm. cardigan mm -hmm. in that. And also with that pattern, of course, we have the Ava, which is this sort of like heathery colors. It's beautiful. Um, and that's, that's shown there with the sweater. Um, and again, you get six balls because you can make either the sweater or the cardigan in it and you get four balls for the child. So six balls at 28.99 four balls at 19.99 that's Ava that's the it is super soft super soft yarn that's those ones the pink so this is Sophia which is the one that I'm actually wearing and this one again then you get seven balls this time to make the cardigan or the sweater then this pattern and this is definitely the pattern that's perhaps better for absolute beginners mm -hmm. because it's that little bit simpler um, you haven't got to do the cabling, but it's all very clear. The instructions are very clear. Do just remember to read it through before you have a go. So this is Sophia, £32.99. You get seven balls, which is enough to make the cardigan or the sweater. And if you're going to buy it for the children, it's £19.99 and you get four balls, but you still get the same pattern. And then finally, it was in the lead, but it's been pipped at the post. This is Grace. So this is into the lilac-y colours. It's really, really soft and beautiful colours here. Um, and this one is £32.99 for seven balls. If you're making for an adult or if you're making for a child, it's four balls at £19.99. All of the yarn does the work. Yes, all of the yarn does the work for you. It's, even the cable one is a relatively simple design, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a nice, easy to wear cardigan. But the, the variation, the stripes come from the yarn itself. You haven't got to worry about that at all. It just happens, which I think is really gorgeous, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Um, now, the, the, yes, I must say, because Yarn Lane is back tomorrow, um, that's with Nikki, oh, Knitted Critters, which I had on a previous show. They are so gorgeous. I think they're crocheted, aren't they? They are crocheted and they're these amazingly big soft toys and I'm glad I'm not doing that show because I did say next time I do it I'll have mine made up and I haven't made it up yet but I will do it but do join us at 12 o'clock tomorrow for Yarn Lane and of course um, if you're into sewing as well Sewing Street starts at 8 a.m and it will be with John Scott if you're watching on telly now and you go over to 
jewellery maker, you can, get, you can get your fix of John on there because he's on there now. So I will be back next week. Um, I can't remember which. Um, I think it's Thursday and Friday again next week. Yes, yeah, Thursday and Friday next week. I can't remember the actual dates. So I'm looking forward to that and to seeing what lovely fabrics and tools and everything else <laughs> I get to play with. I do love it. Um, so I will see you then. John will see you tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a good Friday. Get that little pun there. And uh, we'll see you later. <laughs>